Hello. One thing that we were thinking about at the beginning of the school year that we haven't addressed yet <clears throat> is if I collect some data, um, should I connect the dots and draw a line from one dot to the next line from to the next dot line to the next dot and so on? Or should I draw a best fit line that doesn't quite hit all the points but passes near them? It came up in class previously that we were thinking about that issue, but we didn't really resolve it. So I would like for us to resolve that, and we are going to make a choice and um, settle on what is a best practice for doing physics. Should I draw dot to dot, or should I make a best fit line? So thinking about what happens if I draw dot to dot to dot to dot, like I did here, and this is just some uh, fake sample data of the kind of thing that you did before, where you let a toy car run. And the way that I set this up with my distance traveled as the independent variable, that's on the horizontal axis, dependent variable of time on the vertical axis, means that this would be the kind of experiment where a group let a car run for 20 centimeters measure how much time it took to get there let it go 40 centimeters how much time 60 centimeters how much time 80 centimeters how much time 100 centimeters how much time so if we draw dot to dot to dot then this shows us the change from one data point to another data point now a question that i would want to ask myself about that is i can see that the steepness of the graph changes between any one pair of dots. So is the steepness of the graph changing because the car started doing something different? Or did the steepness of the graph change because our data point isn't in the exact perfect spot? Now, if we find ourselves in a situation where we really, really, really care about the dot to dot to dot, like the exactness of those points, and we're very confident in the locations of those points, and we want to see exact change from a data point that we're very confident in to another data point that we're very confident in, then a dot to dot plan might be the right plan. I would also like to make the claim that just because you were watching the car and you clicked a button on your stopwatch when the car got to 20 centimeters and then you clicked a button on your stopwatch when the car got to 40 centimeters and you clicked a button on your stopwatch when the car got to 60 centimeters that didn't change what the car was doing you pushing a button on the stopwatch on your phone didn't change the car's behavior in any way and so if the steepness of that graph has anything to do with like describing what was the car doing then drawing dot to dot to dot implies that what the car was doing changed each time you pushed a button on your stopwatch, which doesn't feel very realistic to me. On the other hand, if we think about a best fit line, the best fit line doesn't perfectly match the data points. And some people might look at that as a flaw in best fit lines, but really that's the strength of best fit lines. That's the point of best fit lines. The point of a best fit line is making the assumption that any one of our data points isn't a perfect representation of what we wanted to measure. And I don't know about you, yes I do, but when I use stopwatches, I know sometimes I push that button too early, sometimes I push that button too late. And if I measure the exact same event five times, I'm gonna get five similar but slightly different numbers for my time. I don't feel confident that every one of those red dots on this graph, I'm not confident that I had those times perfect. And I don't think you should be too. I don't think you should be either. These measurements are not perfect. And so I don't want, if I'm doing physics, I don't want to draw something on my graph that assumes perfection of the location of my data points. I want something that's going to take into account knowing that my data points are not perfect.
and that sometimes I measured a little bit too high of a number and sometimes I measured a little bit too low of a number because I did my best when I was measuring. I was trying to measure an exact amount, but sometimes I push too early, the number's too small. Sometimes I push too late on the button, the time is too large. That's also why a good best fit line should have about an equal number of points both above and below that line. And I was aiming for that when I made this best fit line that you see here on the screen. A good best fit line should have approximately half of the data points are higher and approximately half of the data points are lower than if I had done it perfectly because about half the time I'm going to measure too high and about half the time I'm going to measure too low because that's all just accidental. This is how using a stopwatch works. I don't measure perfectly. But the best fit line, in addition to smoothing out my poor measuring, um, in addition to smoothing out the fact that I measure too high and too low sometimes, it also is there to show patterns. It's there to show trends in what does this car do if, we're, again, we're looking at a toy car moving and seeing how long does it take for it to travel so far. And unlike the dot to dot, I can use the best fit line to make best guesses at things that I haven't measured. That's powerful. That's amazing. I only measured out here to 100 centimeters, but I could extend that line out to make what's probably going to be a reasonable, decent first guess at how much time will it take for that car to go 200 centimeters. Even without having measured it already, I can feel pretty confident in coming up with a pretty good answer to that if I extend the graph. Or that's what we call extrapolation. Or I can use the idea of what we call interpolation, looking inside of the graph. Like you can see at a distance traveled of 70 centimeters, I didn't make a measurement for how much time does it take to go 70 centimeters. But by reading that graph, I could come up with a pretty good approximation of how much time it'll take to go 70 centimeters. So interpolation is reading between data points, reading within that graph, and extrapolation, extra is beyond. Extrapolation is being able to interpret something beyond the data that I actually measured. So if I'm looking at a dot to dot to dot, I don't know, like, is the next one going to be less steep, more steep, less steep? More? I don't know. And so, like, will the graph zig or zag next is hard to know. And so, like, well, maybe I could get a pretty decent interpolation from this graph of, let's say, how much time will it take to go 70 centimeters? I really don't feel confident that I could do that with how much time would it take to go 200 centimeters? And the best fit line is a way better plan for that one. And I would argue that a best fit line, because those data points aren't really exactly right, the best fit line would be the better choice, even for trying to make an approximation of how much time would it take to go 70 centimeters. When we're doing physics, we care more about the patterns then we care about the individual data points because we know that our individual data points aren't exactly right. And drawing dot to dot is more useful for focusing on the exact data points, which is not what we want to do when we're looking for these patterns when we're doing physics. So in case you haven't already guessed, um, I definitely want to make the argument that for doing physics, connecting dot to dot to dot is less useful than drawing a best fit. We can also see here um, something that's been on people's minds a lot in the not too distant past and maybe the present. Um, if we think about COVID case rates, um, if you ever looked at these graphs over the last couple of years, um, we could see like daily case rates. And then, uh, and those are in light blue here. Um, and this is for Lorraine County. Um, from April of 2020 until uh, fall of 2022 or late summer. And the dark blue is the seven-day average. 
like where on this particular date, we're taking the average over the last seven days. And so taking an average over the last seven days, we can see smooths out, like there are some light blue big spikes and bumps and jumps. Um, and also like something that we know with uh, reported COVID cases is like over weekends, then cases were less likely to be accurately updated than on weekdays because, you know, not everybody works on a weekend. Fewer people are working on the weekend. And so we would see like higher case numbers on a Monday than we would on a Saturday, not because more people were getting infected on Monday than on Saturday, but just because of like errors in the way that we do the reporting. And so we don't want to rely on an exactness of the number that was reported for that one day. And so that's why the seven day averages turned out to be a whole lot more useful for looking at trends, looking at patterns, you know, like, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Are cases going up? Are they going down? Looking at any one day is a lot less useful than looking at those rolling averages. By the way, in case you're wondering about the far right of this graph, where you just see a bunch of like big light blue spikes and blankness, that's because at some point we stopped reporting daily cases and they started just getting reported like weekly. And so that's why the seven day average is way lower than those big blue spikes. And that's why there are these big gaps in between. And it's not because we had like no new cases for six days and then a bunch of cases on the seventh day. This is just about the way that the data gets reported, which again, comes back to the idea of focusing on the exactness of any one of our data points is usually the wrong plan for trying to identify any kind of long-term trend, what's happening in the big picture. And so, yes, I do want us to focus specifically on best fits. And when we think about a best fit, Whenever we have a choice like, should I draw dot to dot or should I draw a best fit? My answer is always, you should be drawing a best fit, always. Um, because it serves the, the needs and the purposes of physics and really just about any science better than the dot to dot. Um, but also not every graph is gonna be a straight line. If every graph was a straight line, then we would be done learning math with algebra one. But lucky for you, you got to take Algebra 2. Um, maybe you're in pre-calculus. Maybe one day you take calculus. Like there's lots more math to learn because not every graph is a straight line. And so sometimes our best fit, even taking into account that our data points aren't perfect, sometimes our best fit is going to be a curved shape, and that's going to be okay. Um, and sometimes our best fit will be a line. Anyway, um, that's enough for now. Um, I hope that you did get from all of that that I definitely agree with the idea of making best fit lines because it gives us more power to extrapolate and interpolate on a graph. Like looking for big picture patterns is what we're really interested in.